Morning folks, welcome back. It's the well, it's Monday the 18th of um, March. We're out spraying, we've actually got a dry day. Eric's with me. Um, I'm actually putting some herbicide on, on the winter wheat. Well, actually, I've only got to put it on the last three fields uh, because they were too wet to spray in the winter. As you can see, it's quite patchy out here, but there's loads of black grass. Or not, there's a bit of black grass out here. And um, so we thought we'd put this um, herbicide on to try and control it a bit. Someone was asking where I got my phone charger from. I actually made the bracket and just drilled two holes in it and screwed it on there. Um, that's a magnetic um, holder, which actually that bit does pop off. It's got, can you see what it's called there? W-U-T-E-K-U. Maybe Google that and you might find something. Um, the other thing a few people have asked is um, to do a quick run through on how to operate the Command Pro joystick. Uh, it's very simple, it only takes a minute. There's a little button on the back here, a little collar. You, you have to push that, if I just push it like that it won't move anything and then it will, it will tell me to push, push in that little collar. So you push in the little collar, knock it forward and she'll start moving at 0 0.49 kilometers an hour and then you keep knocking it forwards and it will go up faster and faster, 1.5, or you can just hold it and it will go, and it will just go all the way up to 50k. Um, I just, what I did then when I was moving is I pulled it all the way back so it clicked and it will bring me to a stop. Same going in reverse, you pull in the collar and it will go backwards. Um, you can change the direction of speed. Let me just turn this auto steering off on the sprayer so I can reverse into the corner. I can change direction of speed by um, pulling in the collar and knocking it to the left. Oh, no. I can actually do it on there as well. I can change my direction. I need to pay attention. It's quite useful being able to steer the manually steer the sprayer actually as well when you're reversing on these buttons here. I think on the newer sprayers now on the newer John Deere one. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can operate, you don't need this joystick. Um, you can operate it all on the Command Pro joystick. I might be wrong, but someone did say that to me. I'm reversed into the corner now, so I'm going to turn my auto uh, steering axle back on. Um, you can see the, can you see the pink line there? The sprayer is actually backed up out of the boundary over the grass, but when I turn the sprayer on, it won't actually switch on until the boom moves over that uh, pink line, which is good. So it means you can't accidentally spray the grass on the outside of the field. All right, so if I start, well, we'd, I was doing it on the foot pedal then, but we'll. All right, so if I start moving, pulling forwards now, we'll turn the spray on. I've got two, cru this, these orange buttons here are for cruise control. I've got a slower one. If I knock the joystick to the right, it will put the, put the um, our speed into cruise control. If I press number 12, that will turn the auto steer on. So we're now locked onto the boundary track. Um, what else? This one controls the aggressiveness of the of how fast we speed up and slow down. Um, these are to control S uh, hydraulics SCVs. They're the same there as well. We've got C and D there. I've just got to negotiate a tree now. Um, so yeah, I've got this. I've got this cruise control set to 10k and that one set to 14.6 but I'm just going slow now because we've got to see if we can squeeze between these two trees did cut the branches off oh, boom up, boom up, boom up just touched the tree I did cut the branches off that tree just so that the boom would fit through there turn auto track back on So that's it, it's very simple to use. Everyone, a lot of people think, oh, it's too complicated. Um, the normal auto power is much better, but I would def definitely disagree. I would not want to be without Command Pro. Hopefully I get a full day spraying today. They have forecast a dry day. Um, so fingers crossed. I'm just gonna, I've got, just got three fields of this herbicide to put on. Um, and then I'm gonna go and spray some more um, seed beds with some Roundup ready for cultivations. 
We have got quite a lot of bear patches on this field. Um, so what I can do, what there's no point in spraying that bit because there's nothing growing there, not even black grass. So I just turn that off. See, we've only got half the sprayer spraying now. Because there's no point in spraying mud. There's crop on that side. Just folding up. I've just finished that job. Um, that's how his free fields done. And now I'm going to go back to the yard and give the sprayer a good washing out. And um, put some Roundup in and got to go and spray 50 hectares of uh, ground that's got to be cultivated. As you can see, I found some mud. I'm not making ruts here, it's just a bit sticky on top. Get rid of some mud off the tyres on the track. The tractor just let out a massive plume of smoke. I'll see if I can get it to do it again. I don't know why. Nah, I'm not going to do it now. So I'll just quickly explain to you what I'm doing to wash the sprayer out. That black tank on the front of the machine there is a clean water tank and it holds about 500 litres of water. When I was, I ran out of chemical in the field when I finished the job. I then transferred some of the clean water out of that black tank into the yellow tank and it rinsed out and then I sprayed that out in the field so then the tank was completely empty. I've then come back, put 200 litres of clean water in, flushed that around the tank and now I've uh, pulled the bung on the, or um, well, I'm going to pull the bung on the bottom of the tank and let that down the, the drain. We've got a contained tank underneath this floor to catch uh, spillages and washings out. Um, and then I don't know if you can see in the back corner there, there's a there's that tower of um, bio beds. We can then pump the contents of the tank through that and it filters it all out, cleans it. And then the cl clean water is then pumped out. So, right, I'll get out and show you show you inside the tank and it, the water going down the drain. Hopefully that makes sense what I just said. Also I thought I could show you my roof bar as well that's got the air horns on it. It's bolted, there's a bracket right at the front that bolts to the um, GPS, where the GPS bolts on which supports it all. So, right, that's in the tank. And then if I pull on this, if I pull on that, it pulls the bung on the bottom of the tank and lets it all out. Okay, now that's empty. We need to fill it back up again with water. Could we um, do that? We gotta fill it right up now. It's gonna fill back up again with water. I haven't used the bio bed yet. I'm not actually sure. I haven't worked out how to use it. So maybe if it's raining tomorrow, I'll see if I can get it going. But right now I've got to put some Roundup in. That's my next job is spraying Roundup, which comes out of this tank. Just sucking the roundup out of this IBC. It's going in there fairly quick. We need 75 litres, so it won't take many minutes. And then once we've got enough chemical in, I'll switch this tap off, unplug it off here, plug it on here, which is connected up to the clean water hose pipe, and then that then flushes all this pipe out with clean water.
Oh, I made a fresh coffee. I have just had my lunch. Um, we can have some music. We're gonna, I've got to drive up to Farm 2, so it's a six mile drive. And um, spray that block up there. For some reason, my music's not playing. Oh, no. I should take it a bit steady up the road because I'm fully loaded. So there's a lot of weight there. Look at this donut in the Jag. I just pulled up to the traffic lights and he overtook me and then realised there's a red light. Oh, now he's going to be in the way of the crane. Watch this. <laughs> the crane driver was being rude to him. I don't know why he hasn't backed up out of the way. He just sat there in the way. Right. All the idiots are out today. Got an Audi now. She seemed to think I was going to squeeze through there. I was trying to rain. <laughs> God's sakes. Absolutely unbelievable. It's just hard to get anything done without the weather messing it up. Honestly, this lot are doing my head in. I don't know how he thinks I'm going to get through there. I did just pull over for him and he started going backwards. What are you doing? Dog unit, apparently. Met a horse box now. Honestly, sometimes you can come up here and not meet a single car, and then other times you meet horses, lorries, buses, the lot. Horse boxes. Why are they reversing all the way back? Oh my days. Oh, they're going up there. We made it, eventually. Right, I've just started. Let's turn our auto steer on. Um, yeah, I've just started. It looks pretty bare out here, probably on the camera. But I'll get out in a minute and show you what I'm actually spraying. There's quite a lot of uh, black grass and brome out there in places. It's a bit tacky up here, but at least we're not making ruts. The ground's pretty hard and firm up here. Um, I've got to show you. I had to get out anyway because I had a blocked nozzle. See all this black grass here, look. Need to wipe that out with the Roundup before we can put the beans in. Tidy it up. Thought I might as well stop and get some fuel. I've just finished uh, one field out of four. Watching TikTok, it seems that every other video is like someone getting stuck out fertilising or spraying. Ow. Um, and people using tractors with tracks to go fertilising. It sounds like a good idea. As long as you've got a tractor with tracks. Farming in the UK these days seems like it's essential to have an 8RX just, just to get out in the fields at the moment. You can tell the barley's taken up the fertiliser because you can see the misses now. Well, all the miss. Um, when I go over that with the second dose, I might start at the other end of the field and go the opposite way to what I went the first time, and then I should be able to cover the cover the misses. Apart from that, it looks really well. It looks strong. It's definitely growing with this mild weather. What we've been having, it was about what's it, 14 degrees today, even though it's cloudy. This is drying off quite nicely out here. There's a bit of breeze outside. Um, I'd quite like to just run through these fields with the drill and use it as a cultivator. Just do a shallow um, cultivation. Well, I guess the beans are going to have to go in the ground, probably several centimetres. So, like, a several centimetre cultivation with the drill and, um, and let it dry off and then drill the beans. It's drying off nicely this afternoon. There's a bit of breeze out there. Not, not too bad, just a bit, and a bit of sunshine. Longer days as well now, aren't there? So uh, if we can have a few days without rain, things will dry up quite quickly. Um, we've got to put beans in this ground and drill beans out here. What I'd quite like to do is run over it with the drill and use it as a cultivator. 
go in several centimetres, deep enough, and then let it dry off, and then um, and then go over it once it's dried off and put the beans in. Um, this is qu it's, um, quite heavy clay, this ground, so I'm worried if we go through it with the deep cultivator, the Amazon Sears, that it's going to bring up, well, just big lumps of clay, and then they'll dry out like lumps of concrete. Um, so I don't know. That's what I'd quite like to do. Okay, I've just finished the spraying. Um, the tank's empty. So now what I've got to do is draw the... I've got uh, 250 litres in the clean water tank, so... Oh, the pump's not in. I have to pump out of gear. Wait there. That switches it so that it will draw the clean water into the yellow tank. I just need to put the pump into gear and then it will draw it in. I always keep some spare nozzles with me. Um, this one on the end here, I think I... Well, it stopped working. I thought I might have bashed it on the floor and snapped the end off, but it looks okay. No, I think he's just blocked. Yeah, so instead of trying to unblock it now, I'll put a different one on it that's already clean. Oh, and then I'll take the other one back to the farm and clean it out. I'll just run a bit of that clean water through the nozzles, and then it's done. We can head on back to farm one. Back through the traffic lights. It's turned out a nice sunny evening now. Well, I say evening, it's only five o'clock. Alright, safely back in the shed. Morning, folks. Tuesday, the 19th of March. I think we can see it's raining again. We can only get, we only get one dry day, and then it rains again. Um, the old weather is in a bit of a state, and that they just keep saying they keep teasing us with this dry weather, and then like that high pressure, it was down in the southwest, and it kept trying to edge up, edge up, and then now it looks like it's not going to get it. So, weather's going to carry on like this. It'll be a good season for growing grass, that's for sure. Mind you, last time I was a good season for growing grass, wasn't it? Who's ringing me? Simon. Yeah, I can't remember what I was saying now. Um, yeah, the weather, probably. I don't know, I'm going to stop talking about the weather, it's depressing. I'm going to see if I can get that bio bed going in a minute. Uh, there's some people here to change the roller shut door, so we've got to sort that out. For them. There's a few jobs going on in the yard today. If you're wondering what I'm doing now, I'm just loading up haylage bales. They're gonna go up to the other farm, up to the cattle yard, because uh, they're running out there. So, and they got st these ones got stored here for the winter. Uh, we got cattle here as well. Got some in that shed, and then some in that shed down there. I couldn't tell you much about them, but I know there's cattle in there. I know they're limousines. Yeah, so this roller shut door in front of me is knackered. It's written off. The, um, one of the grain trailers was tipping and it and it um, hit the door and it's bent the bent the drum and everything so it's got to have a new door but um, then I I went and accidentally put a load of grain up against it I run some barley out to the shed and didn't keep an eye on it and um, and it and it's gone up against the inside of the door so we got to try and um, and the door won't open so we got to try and uh, take, I'm going to try and take the pressure off it with a bucket and then pull it up, pull the chain to see if it'll see if it'll go up. Alright, we managed to get the door open. Just got to push the barley in now because it's all come out the door. Not too much. <laughs> Just 
just loaded another one on the Richard Weston. Um, we're going to see if we can get that um, bio bed to work. Avon doors are here. They're taking the old door down. They're going to put a new one up. All right, so I've plugged it in. Let's switch it on and see what happens. It's got a pump. I think there's a pump in the down in the sump tank, and then there's a pump in there as well to, to circulate it. Um, I can hear something happening. Let's see if I can climb up and have a look. Wait, there, I'll put you in my pocket. All right, it's on. So what it's going to do is squirt all the water into that bed of compost. I think it's peat and straw. And it's going to filter all the way down. I'll climb back down. I'm pretty sure it should filter down through the bottom and then into this one and then into this, that one. And by the time it gets down to here, it should be clean water. Um, I'll have a look in a minute. I see. So, yeah, there's a pump in here too. So, when it gets filled, once the bottom tank starts to fill up, that pump will kick in and pump the water outside. It will be clean water. Um, so, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Um, it's got a bit of a leak. I'm going to have to switch it off. For some reason, there, those, the holes on the, those tubes are pointing out here. So, I'll switch it off and um, see if I can fix it. That's better. I just had to twist the blue pipe round so it actually squirted into the bed and not out here. But I should just be able to leave it switched on now. Because it's got a float pump, so as soon as, as soon as the pump down there starts to get covered in water, it'll, it'll kick in, pump it into there. If that tank down there gets full up, that pump kicks in and empties it, so should just be able to leave it switched on. I take it you didn't want that one. Huh? You didn't want that one. <laughs> Those ones are going out to grass. Oh, says the U. <laughs> that should be helping, really, shouldn't I? These are all, uh, these have all got twins in there. This is where they start off. I think there's about, I uh, guess, about 50 left in there. And then obviously once they have their lambs, they come in here into the little nursing pens. And then they, where, where you just saw Laura taking them out of, because she's just taking them out to grass, then they go in this pen. And that's where they wait um, to be taken out to the fields. These are the triplets in, the, in this pen and then the singles over there. And that one, Laura lambed them just before she left. They'll go into one of these pens in a minute. Every time they get moved out of these pens into the mothering pen, into that big one, uh, we have to muck them out. So that's what I'm doing now. And then they get a fresh bed, fresh bed ready for when the other ones come in. He's coming too. Alright, Wednesday afternoon, I'm just up at farm two loading a grain lorry of wheat. It's a nice day today, after the wet day yesterday. We didn't have a massive amount of rain yesterday, it was just drizzling all day. 
It was rubbish. Um, I brought the tractor up here to load this lorry because the Discovery, my disco has got flat battery. So I put it on charge. I hadn't, I hadn't used it for several days. And it drains the battery if I don't use it. So I've been um, doing more sheep work this morning, helping with lambing. So nothing exciting to video. So yeah, right. Um, I'll load this lorry and then we're going to go and have a look at some... Because another dry day tomorrow, so we're going to have a look at a few fields, see if they'll be dry enough to spray tomorrow. It's a nice day, but there's no wind. Um, so... Even this will be tacky. This hasn't dried off at all. Yeah, it's squelchy. Probably looks dry, but it's not. You can see your footprint in it. Alright, that didn't take long. It only takes about 25 minutes to load wheat out the spout, so it's pretty quick for a spout. Um, right, let's go and see. We're going to have a look at those fields that I need to spray, see how wet they are. Loads of mustard growing out in this one. I'm surprised I didn't die off in the winter. And it's even thicker out there. And once the top are out there. Hmm. Let's have a drive out here and see see what it's like. See what our wheel marks. I can't believe how much mustard's out here. It smells good. Yeah, it's quite dry out here to be honest. I reckon that'll travel tomorrow, no problems. Can't believe I forgot to cut that hedge. I'll quickly run out over the road and have a look, see what's see what it's like out there. It looks very green. There was um Stubble turnips, whether they've grown back. I haven't been up here for ages. There were sheep out here in the winter. But. It is drier out there than what I thought it was going to be. I think I'll definitely come and spray this tomorrow. And, um,. <laughs> And then that'll all just get cultivated in. All right, we're away. Thursday morning. I think I might have said yesterday was Thursday, and obviously yesterday was Wednesday. I got a bit carried away. Um, yeah, just out spraying some roundup on these cover crops because we're going to be putting spring oats out here once it's been cultivated I should think the cultivator will mix in this mustard quite well but it could be two weeks by the time the cultivator gets here anyway so um, it would have probably died down quite a lot by then anyway um, to be honest this mustard has done really well to survive the winter to not because normally uh, the, the frost will kill the mustard off but for some reason it didn't Unless there was something else mixed in with the mustard seed that hasn't, that is, that um, the frost won't kill. Definitely looks like mustard to me. Um, it's travelling quite well, which I'm pleased with. It's just a shame it's going to rain again tomorrow. Uh, very frustrating. As normal, I'm going to moan about the weather forecast. And, but I expect you guys are probably doing the same thing, moaning about the weather forecast. Although, by the time you've watched this, or watching this I would hope that the weather is looking up because it will be April then but next week's not looking great low pressure Monday it's gonna rain quite a bit I think right this sprayer backs quite nicely into the corners getting on well with it I think this is probably the smallest field we've got it's only one and a half hectares I just go around the headland once up and down the middle and it's done I'll only be out here five minutes I've moved over the road now into some different fields. Uh, these ones had uh, stubble turnips, but I think they also had some um, forage rape mixed in with them, and that's what's growing. That's what the yellow flowers are in here, is rape. And also there's quite a lot of black grass as well down there. So get all that sprayed off and get it cultivated. 
it's travelling better than what I thought it was going to actually. There's a few wet spots, there's like down in the corners and along the bottoms and that, but apart from that it's going well. A few of you are wondering where we got the where we got the mud flap from. I think they advertise them in the Farmers Weekly. So there you go. You can look them up. Right. I'm gonna head back to the farm. Bloody farmers always dragging mud out on the road. Unbelievable. Right, I'm almost finished for uh, Thursday. Well, finished spraying anyway. Um, works quite well having this the fodder rape mixed in with the turnips because then when the turnips get eaten, the rape and the the sheep move on or the lambs move on, the rape then grows back and actually you've still got a cover crop. So, oh. And then you, you know, obviously just keeps the soil healthy, having something growing in it instead of it just being a muddy mess all winter, because of, um, because the sheep have been out there. But yeah, anyway, this is my last field, and then I'm done. I'm starving. It's annoying because another couple of days, and this would be dry enough to work this ground. Um, there's a few wet patches, but you can go around the wet patches. I think if we were waiting for the wet patches to dry out, we'd be waiting until the summer. But yeah, the most, the majority of the fields, another two days of dry weather, and they'd they'd work. But it's going to rain tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. I know a few, a few of the neighbours have been out and managed to get a little bit on light ground drilled. Um, I did sink a bit here. Definitely made some wheel marks there on the headland. Yes, yeah, so that's 84 hectares that I've done today. We've done a ton of massive amount, but it was in, I think, 12 different fields, so lots of little fields. And that's why it takes so long. You don't get much output on little fields. It is only half past five, so it's not too bad, I guess. We could easily go on and do another 30 hectares this evening. Now I'm finishing, actually. I did go home for dinner and then come back to work to wash out the sprayer um, and help with lambing. All my days. I don't think there's much point in washing it either until the until the weather settles down. I'll probably clean the windows. Right, Friday now. Um, loading wheat into grain lorries. It's my third load of the day, and third and last, I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, it did rain this morning, but it's dried up again, which is good. Um, I'll have to look on the radar and see if that's it for the rain, but hopefully it is. I know there are showers at the weekend, but hopefully we'll uh, get some ground pulled up in the next few days. I mean, the forecast isn't looking great for next week, but we're at the stage where we're just going to have to go for it and see what happens. And if it gets wet, it gets wet, but I see a few people around doing a little bit here and there on the drier ground. But yeah, I totaled up what I've got to drill earlier. I've got to drill 200 hectares, so I have to crack on with it. I was going to try and get through the hedge and show you the lambs in the field, but I can't get through. They're growing so quick. There they are, look. They're only like three weeks old. Doing really well. The new door's up and running now. We just gotta get rid of the old one. I think I need to chop it in half to fit it in the scrap metal skip though. I thought before I go to the effort of trying to cut it all in half, I'll see if I can just put it in the skip and squash it down and see what happens. Let's see. I don't know, it's quite long. I need a longer skip. Squish it down. I might be able to just fold it in. Yeah, that's working. I'll go and get some more and put on top of it. Keep squashing it down. There's only like 20 ewes left to lamb now. Gone through them really quickly. About three, three to four weeks. 280 ewes. Let's see if I can scoop the rest of it up. I think there's a pallet underneath it. Oh yeah. <laughs> you started swinging then. Um, I'm going to see if I can pick the rest of it up, but I think there is a pallet underneath it. I think. It's 
See if we can pick it up now. It's surprisingly quite light, actually, those slats. They're not heavy at all. I've kept a couple of pieces that might be useful um, to, keep us, oh, to keep us parts for other doors in the future. All right, I've got it all apart from one piece. I'll go and pick that up and chuck it in the grab. Probably gonna have to chop that bit in half. The main drum is solid. I can't bend it with JCB. Get this bit squashed in the skip. See if I can pull the uh, pallet out. We'll use that pallet. It goes underneath straw bales and hay bales. I think once we get some weight in the middle, I'll then be able to fold the, fold the ends in. Just want some heavy stuff in the middle to hold it down. That went quite well. The, um, I only used one bar on the 12 amp hour battery on the disc cutter to do that, so that's good. It's thick, pretty thick steel as well. Right. Go put this in the scrap bin. Right, I'm gonna, um, it is actually Friday afternoon now. I'm just gonna go and help do some sheep jobs. So I might, I'll probably end up Unless anything interesting happens, I'll probably end this video here. Um, and then the next video you see will hopefully be cultivating and drilling. Um, yeah, it's always the same, and that you see the neighbours out, and you think, oh, maybe we should go out and give it a try. So I think we will at the weekend, as long as we don't get too much rain uh, tonight or tomorrow, we should give it a go and see what happens. Right, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. It's pretty muddy out here. Phil's gonna want a good rolling when it dries up. It's dry in the yard. It's certainly not dry out here. Run out of the way, little ones. I'll go for a quick drive around the field and make sure there's none around the fence or anything. That's a lot of sheep. We got three fields of them. A lot of sheep. This one's coming over me.